I've always had a passion for ingredients and their uses. My father was a fruit and vegetable salesman, so I became interested in food because of the produce he used to bring home, and I didn't want to waste any of that produce. It's an attitude I have carried on throughout my professional career. So when we opened the doors to Longcombe in 2002, I had always had the intention of becoming involved with a more sustainable gastronomy. And over the years, it became an obsession, not just of quality, but sustainability. It's the right thing to do to make a difference. It hasn't always been easy. 20 years of ups and downs. We've taken massive risks. We sold everything we had all those years ago and made huge sacrifices. We cherished our independence and freedom to run the restaurant how we want, but all to fulfill our dreams. Farm to Fork has always been at the heart of what we do and that continues to this day. Our farm, located less than a mile from the restaurant, is at the core of everything that we do. Over the years, we've worked hard to build our growing capabilities at our farm to create the natural, hyper-local, seasonal cuisine that has become Longclume's trademark. A farm designed by chefs, for chefs, to produce a world-leading growing operation with taste and flavour as our main concern. Every dish on the menu begins life at our farm where we learn from our head grower what is at its peak or an ingredient from the wild or one of our fantastic local producers. Those ingredients are then discussed with the senior team and developed in Aulis, our development kitchens. The chosen dishes then make their way onto the menu at Long Clue. It's as simple as that. Over time, my vision has become intertwined with the environmental issues that our society faces. I began to see that farming and how we approach it, with no pesticides or fertilisers, and focusing on small-scale production, is the future of agriculture and sustainable dining. Long Clume winning three Michelin stars is a dream and a massive honour. It's always been one of my biggest ambitions for the restaurant, and I'm so glad we have now got there. I really felt we had the momentum this time around, building from the last four to five years, and it's that consistency, I think, finally took us over the line. Longclume is always evolving, refocusing, refining. We strive to make our guest experience better every day, and the talented team we have in place makes for very exciting times ahead. Talent, humility, integrity, honesty, loyalty. That is the long clean way. So, oh, hello, uh, I'm Simon Rogan. Um, I'm delighted to be here um, in Gastromassa, Istanbul. Beautiful Istanbul. Really excited for the next few days. So, for those you don't know, uh, I'm a chef and restaurateur from the UK. Uh, and I'm here to talk about sustainable gastronomy um, and our farm in the Lake District, uh, which is where we are situated. So we've got climate crisis, as we all know. Our planet is warming at a catastrophic speed. And if we don't make changes fast, there will be no uh, gastronomy, uh, let alone sustainable gastronomy. There's a need for major change, a need for change within our food system. We need to get back on track for sure. So we have a responsibility as chefs at the top of the consumer tree uh, to show the, ch show the way forward for these changes. And I've got the way we eat. I mean, the way we eat has changed more in the last five years than in the last 10,000. You know, we were once such simple creatures, you know, working with the season and only taking what we needed. You know, loss of seasons is intertwined with globalization. So now you get tomatoes all year round, grown on the other side of the world. Pick when it's green, ripened with ethylene gas. It looks like a tomato. The reality is, most food is being created in a factory, not a farm, or a field, or in a bed. So why has it all gone wrong um, with the quest for cheap food? and high profits. We have created a world where anything is available all the time. And if food is becoming more and more dangerous to consume, 
in ways that are deliberately uh, hidden from us. So, indeed, how do we get here? Um, I won't go into depth for each of these points, as there are a lot of like-minded people here today who have touched on this before. But for me, it all uh, began with the rise of fast food, you know, where factory systems were applied to the kitchen. You know, there's unnatural compliance. The mentality of uniformity, conformity, and cheapness had dire consequences and changed how food is produced. You know, we've got mass production. Even if you don't eat in a fast food restaurant, the chances are you're going to be eating ingredients from that system. And there's conglomeration when you look at today's industrial food system. What looks like variety and choice is actually produced from a few key crops controlled by a few leading companies. And then there's food processing. So most processed foods we consume every single day lead back to chemically produced corn, wheat, and soybean fields. Which brings me to the subject of biodiversity. In fact, the loss of it. And the key work we're doing um, back at home in the Lake District in Cartmel. So soil health is very, very important. You know, living in just one handful of soil are roughly in excess of 500 species of fungus and 100 million species of bacteria. You know, these make up the biodiversity of rich, fertile, ar arable soil. But the introduction of herbicides and pesticides in the mid-1900s was the beginning of biodiversity genocide or ecocide. And it's ruined our farmlands in the UK, which led to ecological collapse. You know, the spraying of herbicides and pesticides over the coming years saw the biodiversity of our arable farmlands diminishing with the loss of 80% of our once thriving wildflower meadows. The training reaction to this event was over time, we also lost 80% of our insect population, disappeared and a massive decline to our bird and uh, population that relied on living off our ecosystem. We had the destruction of ancient farming space to increase growing space. Over the years, farmers tore down ancient hedgerows um, to increase growing space and filled the ponds in, and drained massive areas of wetlands to increase growing space. The destruction has resulted in loss of habitat for small mammals, birds, insects, and so on. And then we've got unsustainable farming practices. The greatest threat to our biodiversity are our farming practices, our urbanization, pollution, and the introduction of non-native species. I mean, on the scale of things, we have an urgency to help put things right as soon as we can. So if world system impact, the worldwide agriculture is one of the main drivers of biodiversity decline. Uh, nature and our biodiversity have formed over millions of years. Mankind has managed to make that collapse in the past 100. So then we go back to the soil and the topsoil depletion. I mean, we, we rely on a few inches of soil uh, to feed 8 million mouths now. Our main priority for this massive task is to care and work with our ecosystem rather than work against it. So when I was given the opportunity to build my own farm, I seized it. So uh, that's me, uh, just chilling out with my favourite hat on. So at our core in Cartmel, located in the Cartmel Valley, just where we are in the north of England, our farm is situated on a site comprised of woodland, pastures and many acres of intensive growing space. Growers and chefs work side by side to decide what to grow, when it is harvested, and how it is prepared. It's setting a benchmark for the calibre of ingredients and th therefore the dishes that incorporate them. It ensures a truly traceable dining experience across all of our restaurants. And in fact, 80% of our ingredients across our Lake District restaurants now comes from our farm. You know, by growing everything ourselves, we can better understand and place more control over the ingredients that we use as we have a very short but very productive season. And because of our cooler climate, we believe the produce to be of superior in quality and in flavour. And all year round, different growing methods are used to guarantee 
flexibility, productivity, and the need to ensure that our restaurants evolve with every season. You know, our farm is an extension of our kitchens, applying the same ethos, drive, and attention to detail. Hopefully this will work. There again. So this is our farm, to show it in its entirety. Wee, wee, wee. So this was taken a year ago, and it's actually triple, it's actually gone up in size by one third again. So there we are. It's quite a big operation now, and there was nothing there 12 years ago. So when setting up our farm, biodiversity was at the forefront of our mind. We erected hedgerows, which have many benefits. The saplings we planted to create our hedgerows all comprise of useful specimens, such as hazel, blackthorn, cherry, rowan, elder, birch, and much more. These are not just useful in a culinary way, but also for the biodiversity on our farm. The hedgerows act not just as a windbreak, but also shelter the food from ne for nesting birds who are part of our pest control. Before planning on how to set out our farm in the early days to bring back the biodiversity in our area has started to pay off. And we leave areas of our farm untouched and wild for these very reasons. And then we follow uh, the principles of biodynamic farming. You know, planting by the moon cycle, using teas, made from plants as liquid fertilizer. The teas can be made from a number of different species, such as stinging nettles and comfrey. They're my favorites. And these teas don't only feed our plants, but also feed our soil. Caring for our soil is our fundamental principle to our way of farming. And then we've recently reinstated a wildlife pond, which had been previously filled in. You know, having a wildlife pond near to your crops brings benefits such as frogs that help control slug, snail and aphids around your crops. It also gives home to other useful creatures such as dragonflies that again will catch hundreds of aphids and other pests each day. And by constantly improving our environment, we're bringing back biodiversity. It gives us a healthy environment, less pests and an abundance of natural flora and fauna. And of course, we keep uh, beehives as well, for, obviously for the honey, but for the pollination, as well as planting other certain types of flowers to attract other pollinators to our farm. And then we have progress. Excuse me, just a glass of water. So we just set up a worm farm. Um, so <laughs> worm castings. Um, and back guano are said to be the best compost, compost on the planet. So the prices of compost skyrocketing in price at the moment, making our own compost you know, is the way forward. And in 2024, production of peat is going to be phased out. So peat is a major component for all our microcrest production. And there's not another suitable product on the market today. So this fine loam we need for our microcrest is a, a, an essential asset now. And then we're taking our energy needs um, off grid, you know, by investing in wind and solar, and we will be self-sufficient in energy within the next six months. And it's up to our, our farm head chef. We have a chef that just looks after all the produce and his team preserve, you know, to the season that we can use amazing produce in the restaurants all year round. So they've recently been uh, fermenting courgettes, resulting in a liquid which is very similar to lemon juice. And our idle substitution for lemons, as we do not use ingredients that we do not grow on our own island. And in our latest project, uh, mushrooms, a big, big favorite of mine. Um, so we've never really had to grow mushrooms before, but one of the amazing suppliers that are close to us has stopped producing, so we've taken over the, their whole operation. And then we have uh, our livestock. So we already have chickens, we had cattle on our farm, but we intend to extend the livestock with some more quail, uh, sheep, and a new exclusive crossbreed of pig. 
Now we move on to our waste, um, or more to the point, uh, nothing gets wasted. We reuse, repair, and recycle everything that we possibly can. So it's an estimated that 11.8 million tonnes of food waste is thrown into landfill sites in the UK alone. So this not only goes to waste, but also contributes to 20% of the UK's greenhouse gas emissions. So with this knowledge in mind, we decided to invest in nine Rydan food composters. So this is a closed loop composting system, it allows us to turn all organic waste matter into reusable compost. All food waste from our restaurants now comes back to our farm and becomes compost in a matter of just four months. And the compostable materials go into our riding composters where it's turned every day, creating its own heat source, which kills all the pathogens in the waste food. Also building the massive biome of microorganisms which break down the compost at a very fast rate. And then rather than putting this microorganism rich material straight into our fields, we mix it with large green compost piles to make more use of this abundant mass of microorganisms to help break it down. This is our second year with the ride and composters and we have already found we do not need to buy compost in, it is meeting our needs. But change from within is also needed. So for sustainable uh, hospitality, it's not just about nature and our use of resources, it's also about the people. So hospitality jobs have always had a bad reputation and we're really trying to change that from within. There's a big shift happening in our industry. Um, today, it's how we look after and treat each other in the workplace. We like to think we're a good example in our kitchens and we, all our offices, or all our areas, uh, housekeeping, we've created spaces where all opinions can be respected. We also reduced the number of hours worked by closing our restaurants in the lakes more often. And the staff are then allowed to enjoy the same days off. That gives them all the time off together to relax, recharge, and then to come back to work refreshed and motivated. So a target of a three and a half day week uh, for our restaurants is a target and it is possible. So it's imperative that we look after our team Otherwise, where will we be in the future? You know, we're all constantly learning. We respect each other's opinions. And there's so much more information out there. So we rely on the team to share their knowledge as it might just be game changing for our operation. And then obviously the farm linking to our cooking, you know, the main element for what we're known for, our food, our menu, our dishes. Our cooking philosophy is first and foremost to respect the natural environment, which is evident in the way we grow our crops and how these ingredients are prepared and served. It can't be replicated because it's the sum of so many individual elements, our team, the landscape, the produce. This irreplaceable formula is why people travel from across the globe to, our, to experience our restaurants. It's a culmination of taste, textures, temperatures, taking our guests on an ever-evolving journey. So if you didn't know, um, if you don't know, we have a few restaurants. So over the past 20 years, I've worked with a philosophy centered on celebrating the best ingredients, which has led to successful restaurants in the Lake District, London, and Hong Kong. Our group currently holds five Michelin stars internationally. And in 2021, our efforts were towards sustainability were recognized with a newly introduced Michelin Green Star awarded to both Long Clum and Roganic Hong Kong. So we have two green stars on two different continents, which is pretty cool. And I could talk endlessly about all my restaurants, um, each representing my gastronomic visions um, in a slightly different and unique way from the menu, setting or location. Um, but they all reflect one thing, our ethos, and connection to its environment. So looking to the future, predicting the future of gastronomy. Well, I think the pandemic has made the restaurant industry resilient uh, and fostered an ability to adapt, which I can only think to be positive. 
And I also feel that in the next few years, sustainability focused dining will become the norm rather than the outlier. And as we are acutely aware, we are in the midst of a new and immediate global crisis, cost of living, energy, food. Costs are soaring and even though these are very challenging times, we must still look at the opportunities rather than going backwards. Our industry is known to be flexible, creative and forward thinking. So, chefs have the opportunity to change our food system for the better with every single purchase they make. You should know exactly where your food is from, read all the labels and refuse anything that perpetuates this system. Buying local organic food is not a fad, it is our only option. And anyone with land, um, you know, come on, please, you know, look at your outside space, do some research, start growing your own natural produce as soon as they can. So we celebrate 20 years this year, which is also the year we received our third Michelin star for Long Clume, alongside other fantastic awards and achievements. But as a company, we're always evolving, refocusing, refining. We strive to make our guest experience better every day. And the talented team I have in place at the moment makes for very exciting times ahead. And promoting awareness and change to a better and more sustainable future is our aim. So let's push forward together. So thank you very much for listening.